As someone who's created YouTube content full time for a few years now, one of my least favorite topics to discuss is YouTube for a couple reasons. First, because YouTube itself generally shouldn't be the topic of discussion. This is just the platform through which you and I connect, but it's not the reason we connect. We're here to discuss news and current events and ideas and philosophy and crack a few bad jokes that don't always land along the way. YouTube is just the medium or the platform. It's not the topic of discussion, or at least it shouldn't be if it's working properly. But secondly, I never want to give the impression that I'm complaining. This channel is one of the greatest things ever to happen to me, not just giving me a place to share my ideas and connect and interact with a lot of you in the process, but completely reshaping my life and my friends and my family and the family I'll build one day in the future. Complaining not only gives the wrong impression about how much I've loved building this channel, but it's generally the tactic of the weak. The weak complain and the strong adapt. And so it's long been my policy to suck it up and adapt because I love doing this. And I won't quit until I'm hanging out with the rest of the panhandling hobos outside of YouTube's Silicon Valley ivory tower. I did it through Adpocalypse when YouTube forced me to develop new ways to fund this project because the ad revenue rug is yanked out if you want to discuss anything remotely interesting at all. I did it again when Patreon did the same, telling me that my overall brand better fit their whims or it's Jack Conti's delete key for me too. I'm doing it right now as YouTube has decided that independent news commentary is not to receive any algorithmic promotion, meaning YouTube's thumb does its best to keep as many eyes and ears from finding this material as it possibly can. YouTube is a misnomer. It is not about you, at least in its priorities. It's about the same canned corporate approved media that is sinking cable TV and legacy newspapers. With every step, for years now, YouTube has been making it harder for you to tube. And to some extent, that's fine. Hey, it's your Titanic. Go ahead and crash it into that iceberg if you want. That's not actually what pisses me off. What pisses me off is ordering full steam ahead on the collision course while bragging about how great of a captain you are, or worse still, claiming that full steam into the iceberg is actually the best strategy to avoid a crash. Listen, crash your ship if you want to, just please don't lie to me while you're doing it. This week, YouTube CEO Susan WikiWiki posted her quarterly update as she says, reflecting on her priorities and how she can help you be successful on YouTube. She's taking a minute to discuss something incredibly important to her personally, openness, and how to balance that with the responsibility to protect the community. Phrased more simply, free speech and how to balance that with censorship. It's like balancing peace with violence, Susan. You get to pick one. Balancing openness means sacrificing openness. The more you balance it, the less open it is. And as you read through this post, you can see that free speech through censorship is exactly the contradictory strategy she's proposing. She starts with stating her belief that an open platform is a crucial priority. She writes, an open platform leads to opportunity, people turning small-time passions into big-time careers, creating an entirely new economy of tens of thousands of jobs. An open platform leads to community, People of common interest across the globe connect in ways never before possible. An open platform leads to learning. People looking for information can access exactly what they need in moments. Without an open platform, none of these things happen, she writes. That small business never takes off. The bullied kid never finds friends and encouragement. And a planetary physics student never finds the information he needs. Agreed. Correct. Were I to read just that portion, I would assume that Susan is ready to admit that the last few years of nonsensical policy change and creeping constriction on what you can and can't say should be scaled back. After all, if free speech creates all this amazing opportunity you just described, Susan, I'll assume the latest round of bannings was a mistake and these channels will be reinstated immediately. These are channels who have been creating YouTube content for years but are suddenly no longer welcome because YouTube's rules change faster than the seasons and you'll be retroactively punished for breaking them without warning. Yeah, but those are evil channels with bad ideas. Fine, if that's what you think, but that's the point. If you believe in the philosophy that you just described about openness, 
You believe two things. One, that good ideas beat bad ideas in open competition. And two, that the viewer is smart enough to separate the good ideas for himself. That is what created all of the prosperity that you just described. People freely choosing their own paths. Instead, Susan continues in this post to turn her back on the very philosophy she just explained. She says that openness has to be balanced against community responsibility, her actual number one priority, even though she writes about it secondarily to openness, don't be fooled. That's why she's taking the four R's approach, quickly removing that supposedly violating material, a bar that constantly shifts as YouTube reduces the spread of ill-defined so-called borderline content, making sure it never sees the light of a single algorithmic recommendation. It's produced a 50% drop in views from recommendations for that type of content. My channel is personal confirmation, views down at almost exactly that rate, and new subscriptions non-existent because I'm not making the quality content that Susan wants to shine. Instead, they're raising up the, quote, authoritative voices in news that supposedly produce more trustworthy content, trustworthy content for which those channels are being rewarded. Beyond the absurdity of labeling CNN and MSNBC trustworthy, that's a subjective judgment and you're entitled to it, please remember what you're saying implicitly, Susan, that I am untrustworthy permanently. There is nothing I can do to gain your trust, short of working my way to an anchor's desk at one of these corporate propaganda factories. And worse still, you're telling the audience that you don't trust them to determine for themselves who's trustworthy and who isn't. That is a fundamental and diametrical rejection of the philosophy that you started your post with, not just a balance. What you're saying is not that freedom produces economic development and community building and information exchange. What you're saying is that Susan produces those things, or at least that the production should be handled under Susan's oversight. It'd be better if Susan decides what businesses succeed and what businesses fail. It'd be better if Susan decides what friends that bullied kid can make. It'd be better if Susan decides what information finds its way to that kid's physics homework. It'd be better if Susan's friends get special treatment and the fast track to prosperity while her enemies get punished into obscurity. None of this rests upon any premise of freedom. It rests upon the sole premise that Susan is correct authoritatively. And upon that premise, openness, as she describes, isn't just admittedly secondary. It's actually irrelevant. It's just a front to get you to buy that she actually believes that you're capable of thinking for yourself. She doesn't. She thinks that's dangerous, that it would betray her community responsibility to trust you to exercise that ability. She thinks you are so stupid that you can't even be trusted to pick what news channels to watch, and that your decision to come to this channel was a foolish one that should be minimized, even if it is the backbone to her business and her job. You're free to think that and to do that, Susan, to give the finger to the people who created your job and to tell us all to shape up. Just please don't lie to us while you do. Don't duct tape my mouth and tell me that freedom is a very important value. Don't make slot machine policies based on randomness and luck that change with every pull and tell me that transparency is actually the aim. Don't kick me in the nuts and insist that we're actually best friends. I know we all look like idiots, Susan, but we're just smart enough to see through that one, I assure you. And until you start treating us like we are, you'll see plenty more of a fifth R in response. Your ratio. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looky forward to it. Goodbye.